think the Lord wants us to talk to India later, okay? <laughs> so we'll go back to plan B. Let's take our hymnals once again and turn to 297. And we can still pray for Brother Shaker. I hate to get a guy up at 4.30 in the morning and then lose the connection. That's tough on him, so let's pray the Lord will give him some rest. <laughs> All right, keep walking with the Lord. Let's sing together. Jesus wants to keep us in his stanza as the last Jesus is our ahead and take our regular Wednesday evening offering at this time. Let's have a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless. Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity we have to come to you. Thankful for the faithful giving of our people, for the ministries that we support, for the ministry here in Greenville. Lord, we pray that we will be faithful in giving back to you that which you have so abundantly blessed us with. Lord, we're sorry that we missed the connection with Brother Shaker, we know that you are in control of all things, and there's a reason for this, so we put that in your hands. We do pray that you will bless his ministry. We're thankful for all the different things he's involved with there in Mumbai. We pray that you will bless his ministry. We're thankful for uh, Monique and her ability to, to leave tomorrow and to go. We pray that you'll give her safety, work out all the details for everything that's going on, help her to arrive safely in Africa. Lord, we're just thankful to have a part with all of these missionaries who are serving you faithfully. We ask for your protection on them. Now bless our offering time, Lord, that we might glorify you in how we give, for it's in your name we pray. Amen.
Meanwhile, we have a backup plan in case this happens. We do have another missionary to give an update tonight. It's uh, on, a, on a video, however, and uh, it's going to work. But uh, <laughs> we have uh, Daniel and Sarah Jenkins. They just got, got a, a video update from them today or yesterday. Wonderful what God is doing there in the Gambia. I was telling Monique, they're going to be in the same part of the world. I, I sent him your lattice, last prayer letter so he'll know who you are. And they may eventually connect. Of course, that's a big co continent, so that might be like saying from West Texas to the border of Louisiana. That's a long span, so it may not be able to do that. But anyway, they are being used of the Lord in wonderful ways there in the Gambia. You're going to see some of the building projects for the church plants that they're doing. And uh, we've only been supporting them about four years, but just doing a tremendous work. So men, let's bring that video up and let's pray that it uh, goes without glitch, all right? This is Daniel and Sarah Jenkins. Yala, 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 hey everyone, this is Daniel Jenkins here in Gambia, West Africa. I just wanted to uh, give an update. It's been a while since we uh, gave uh, you an update um, just on the work here in Gambia. Um, I am standing in Latria. This is our second ministry location. Um, our church ministry location is in Busambala, and that's about uh, 10 or 15 minutes from here. But this is our second ministry location. Um, this is uh, where also, Lord willing, will be a second uh, church plant location in the future. Um, but uh, this is also going to be where housing is. Um, we're going to have some, uh, some shops available as well for uh, helping nationals that we're training uh, to be able to have their, their own means of income. Um, so there'll be some little shops where they can um, do business and things and then apartments uh, above. Uh, also be for housing for future missionaries, uh, any, anyone that will come and join and work with us, either short term or long term. And so we're really excited about what, what God's doing here. Uh, we've raised the funds for the, the building here and uh, it's ongoing right now. Just wanted to uh, show you all um, a little bit um, of, of uh, the work here. Um, this land is a, a bigger land than a, the church land in Busambala. The construction in Busambala is going to start in November. We have uh, five ministry teams, construction teams and church group uh, teams coming beginning in November all the way through April of next year. And so uh, we have teams from the U.S. and Canada coming to help uh, build the church. Um, but this second ministry location also will be where some of them will, will help um, um, and do some kind of the construction. But uh, we're working with a local uh, builder here and uh, that we've worked with for several years now. And uh, so we, we just we praise the Lord for what we're uh, able to accomplish thus far and the safety that God's given us. Thank you for praying. Thank you for uh, just for giving uh, so faithfully uh, so that we can do the work of the Lord here. And uh, we are just thrilled about what God's doing. Hey, everybody. This is Daniel Jenkins. I am here in Busambala, Gambia. This is our church property that I'm on. Uh, we are getting ready to start our construction of the church building here uh, just behind me uh, in November. We have our first ministry team. Uh, we have a total of five ministry teams, church groups or construction groups coming from the U.S. and Canada over the next few months um, from November until April of next year and they're coming to help with the construction and uh, so you can see the outline of the church, these uh, stakes in the ground uh, behind me, um, that is uh, cor two of the corners of the building. And so the church will be right here uh, be behind me. We'll start digging the footers, uh, Lord willing, uh, in October in preparation of uh, laying the block, the cornerstone blocks, and uh, then the walls um, this November. And so uh, we're excited to share this with you. Just wanted to give you an update. It's been a little while since I shared an update here from the, the property. We've been uh, purchasing materials uh, for the building and getting in preparation for the team coming in November. And so pray with us uh, for the work here in Busambala. We're excited. Our church family is excited um, to have our own building, Lord willing, um, this coming next year. And uh, we're, we're excited. Hopefully sometime April or May, we'll have our first service uh, in our church building. That's the goal. And so uh, we're, we'll be excited to share that with you and keep praying for the church here in ministry 
and um, uh, for the, our people here and that they'll grow in the Lord and also those that are not saved will respond to the gospel and accept Jesus as their Savior. So thank you so much for, for praying for us and uh, I just wanted to give you this little update. I'll spin around here so you can kind of see the property. It's rainy season right now so there's a lot of grass growing but rainy season's almost finished here and uh, we'll be uh, cutting all this down and, and starting construction here pretty soon. But we have our, our borehole well here. Uh, one of our churches graciously supplied that uh, last year. We were able to do that. And so, um, but uh, we're excited to, to build the church here. And uh, it's a great, great uh, town here, Busambala, and a needy place uh, with the gospel. And so thank you guys for your prayers for us. And God bless. All right, let's sing Trust and Obey, 418 in your hymnal, and let's stand this time, all right? Thank you. You can be seated. Charles? My father's way may twist and turn My heart may throw and ache, but in my soul I'm glad I know He maketh no mistake. For by and by the mist will lift, and plain it all He'll make. Through all the way, though dark to Thank you. 
Amen. Thank you, Charles. And uh, oh, brother Tomlin on the piano. Wow, he can administrate a school and play the piano. And well, I don't know what else, brother Curtis? That's great. Thank you. Well, we're sorry about that glitch with the uh, presentation, but that happens. That's that's got to go a long way. That signal around the world because going up to the whatever satellite and then back. So. I sent Brother Ida an email. He got that, and he said, I understand, so we'll try it again another time. But I'm glad you could, uh, we could see the Jenkins tonight. So uh, you, have, you should have gotten a handout when you came in tonight. These are some scriptures that uh, <clears throat> talking about God's protection, God's help for his people. And how many of us have cried out to God for his help and protection. These are just scriptures I was looking up one time on all the, all of the, uh, these are not all the texts, but those on the fact that God is a refuge, he's a rock, he's a high tower, uh, he's a fortress, all of these symbols of God's care and protection. I don't know about you, but that, that means a lot to me. That should mean a lot to you. God protects his people. I just made a note here. It says, in ancient days, people built their cities on top of mountains or high places for protection against their enemies. And uh, they could defend themselves quite easily when they were in the uh, position above. They, could, uh, they weren't as easy uh, targets. And uh, tonight, I've just listed a, just several scriptures on both sides here. And uh, as I listed these scriptures, uh, we're going to seek God and see how he uh, seeks to uh, defend us from our enemies. Of course, our enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. We all have enemies in this world, and uh, we fight them daily. Out of these verses, as I just had written them down, out of those, I, see, I saw four themes come out of those verses, and, and you'll see that. You'll see, we see pressure. We see God's protection. We see his providence. And we see the petition of the God's people. We all face pressure in life. And uh, there's seven of those I want you to see. I've, I've uh, uh, chosen them through the numbers one through seven. And you'll see those, those pressures that we all face in life. First one you'll see in, in number one there, Deuteronomy 33, 27. It says, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee. So we all have enemies. We know that. That's a pressure to deal with the enemies. Of course, I'm not greatest enemy, but the world, the flesh, and of course, Satan himself. Look at the number two verse there, 2, Tim, uh, 2 Samuel 22, 2 and 3. At the last phrase, it says, Thou savest me from what? Violence. 
And uh, that's another pressure that we, we could face. That could be physical violence or that could be spiritual violence, warfare. Now to, down in number six, uh, Psalm 46, verse one, it says, God is the very present help in what? Trouble. And we all face trouble and, uh, and uh, enemies daily. Look at number eight on the other side. There's another pressure. He called it, he says, I will make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Calamities. Wow. And they can come in various forms and in uh, various ways, calamities. It could be health. It could be financial. It could be uh, spiritual attack. It could be any number of things, but calamities that come into our lives. That, and the psalmist was voicing these things unto the Lord. Boy, did not he face enemies and violence, calamities. Number nine there, Psalm 61, three. Again, he says, shelter me and, and, and a, be a strong tower from the enemy. And then down to number 16, Jeremiah 16, nine. Jeremiah says, O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the what? In the day of affliction. Have you ever felt that affliction? You ever been there? Wow, affliction. That's pressure. And then look at the conclusion, that last verse there, Psalm 61, 2. It says, he cried out unto the Lord, when my heart is overwhelmed. Have you ever felt overwhelmed? like you just couldn't go on. David felt that, uh, and the prophets felt that many times. So those are the pressures of life. I don't know what pressure you're facing today or tonight or this week, but we all have those pressures, and sometimes way down on us hard, and they're strong pressure from this world, from our own flesh, from Satan, from circumstances. David experienced that. But what did he do? David wrote about God's help in that time. Uh, protection. And you'll see in the bold letters, the bold words there. I've tried to capture those. Where we can find God's protection. And there in, of course, Deuteronomy 32, 33, 27, Moses says, God is thy refuge. 2 Samuel 22, 2 and 3, David said this, The Lord is my rock. He's my fortress. Again, he said, He's the God of my rock. He's my shield, my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my Savior. Wow. God is a fortress. What is a fortress? Man, it's a place of protection. God says, I am thy protection. I am thy fortress. I will be thy high tower that you can flee into. Then in, in uh, verse uh, 3 there, the number 3 verse, 2 Samuel twenty-two fifty-one. 51, again he says, he's the tower of salvation for his king, for his people. Psalm 18, 1 through 2, again you see the repeat from 2 Samuel, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my buckler. That's a shield, my salvation, and my high tower. God must know, have known that David needed this. David needed that kind of solace that he could come and find God's protective care. And, of course, Psalm 31, 2 and 3, same thing. He says again, God, you are my strong rock, the house of defense. You're my rock and my fortress. And then uh, go to the other side. Again, number seven, Psalm 46, seven, he said, God, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Psalm 57, one, I like this expression. He says, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. And then Psalm 62, seven through eight, again, God is my salvation, my rock, my strength, my refuge. God is a refuge for us. Are you getting the picture? 
Psalm 71, 3, be thou my strong habitation, for thou art my rock, my fortress. And then Psalm 91, 1 and 2, again he uses the metaphor of a shadow, my refuge, my fortress. Psalm 144, 2, he's my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield. And then in the Proverbs 14, 26, God's children shall have a place of refuge. Psalm 8 of Proverbs 18, 10, the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So verse after verse declaring God's power to protect me, to protect you, his people. I think of you, Monique, as you go. I think of the Buckleys back here as they go soon, Taiwan, Africa. You're going to need these, these reassurances. He's your fortress. He's your high tower. He's your strong rock. Because at times you're going to feel the pressure. You're going to feel the burden. God's going to be there for you, for us. But in these verses, I, you see... God's providence. And what is God's providence? Our trust and belief and know that God is in absolute what? Control. Of all circumstances, anything that can come into our lives, God is in control. Notice then his belief in that. He says in number two, there's 2 Samuel 22, uh, verses 2 and 3, it says, the, the God of my rock, in him will I trust. When there's the pressure from life, there is God's protection. And what do we do? God is in control. I will trust in Him. Look at number four, Psalm 18, 1 through 2. He says, again, my strength. God is my strength in whom I will trust. Number eight there, Psalm 57, 1. Again, he says, for my soul trusteth in thee. God is in control. Number 10 there, Psalm 62, 7 and 8. Trust in Him sometimes along the way. Trust in Him what? At all times. In all circumstances. Trust in Him. Number 12, Psalm 91, 1 and 2, the end of the verse. In Him will I trust. And then number 13, Psalm 144, 2. He's my shield and he in whom I trust. You understand what God is saying to us tonight? God is in control. Are you trusting in him? He's promised to see you through the calamities, the tough times, the enemies, all of these things, the day of affliction. When you're overwhelmed, trust in me. Trust in God. Are you doing that? What's well, easy to read these verses and then, and, then to, and then say, God, I trust you, but then to get full of anxiety and fear. Like, God, I don't know if you can do that or not. But God can. He says, I want you to trust me. I'm your protection. I'm your high tower, my fortress. Trust in me. I've got it under control. So there's the pressure God allows into all of our lives. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm your fortress. I'm your tower. And he says, trust in me. I've got it under control. And then David's oftentimes prayed. Notice these petitions. And tonight we can do this. But petition number one, look down in number five. Psalm 31, 2, and 3. Here was David's petition. Lead me. Guide me. How many have ever needed that prayer? Lead me. Guide me. We ought to pray that prayer every day. And then I can make a... I can't do it without his help. So lead me today. Guide me. That was David's prayer. 
Over on number 10, notice Psalm 62, 7 and 8. Last phrase, pour out your heart before him. You know, God loves to hear us pour out our heart when we don't know what to do when we're overwhelmed. Pour out your heart before me. Then down under the conclusion, Psalm 61, 2, it says, from the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee? Don't ever get up, uh, forget or give up on praying. I mean, you may be at your extremities. God says, from the end of the earth, I don't care what's going on in our lives. You may think I'm at the end of my rope. I'm at the end of the earth. I will cry unto thee. And then he says, the fourth petition, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. And uh, that's what we need. Lead me to that rock. He can sustain us. He's bigger than me. He's bigger than my problems. He's bigger than my issues. He can do it, right? So, as we go to prayer tonight, let's let some of these truths guide us in our prayer tonight. I don't know what you're facing. You're facing pressure, tough times. God is your refuge. He's got it under control. Trust in him tonight and pour out your heart before him. See what God does. So we have a lot to pray about tonight. We have missionaries among us that are soon to launch. Tomorrow, let's pray for our sister Monique. Luckily, I love our missionaries, Brother Ida. There's a host of things here in the prayer sheet as well. You can pray for these things. But I would encourage you tonight to take this prayer guide and to say, Lord, here's my heart. So we've got about 12, 14 minutes tonight to gather in our groups to pray. I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll, you'll pray. You'll not talk or visit, but just really get right to it, pray. In about... 8 o'clock, I'll come up, and I'll close the service in prayer. And then we'll have Monique head out to the atrium there. So you make your groups, three or four, five or six families, but get in small groups if you would. And uh, let's, let's pour our hearts to the Lord tonight. Let's pray. This is prayer meeting time. So And uh, pray for our church during this transition time. So let me encourage you as well to remind you, 8.30 Sunday morning. We also have a time of prayer. So, all right, let's go to prayer. You can make your groups now.
us together tonight in this way. Lord, tonight we, we have prayed and your people are praying. Lord, we're trusting in you. Lord, we know that you're our protector. You're our refuge. To, during the time of trial and pressure, we can call on you. You will see us through. Lord, lead us to the rock that is higher than I. Jesus, you never fail. I pray you would bless our dear sister Monique as she leaves tomorrow. And God, attend her way from every point from leaving GSP to all the connections take place over the next 24 to 36 hours. She'll arrive safely there. I guess it's Monrovia. Lord, may all of her things that have been shipped arrive safely. All the things that are being checked tomorrow at the airport will arrive safely. And the Lord, you'll use her on the flights even going to be a light for Jesus. And I pray, Lord, your protective hand to be upon her. So, Lord, dismiss us now with thy blessing. And, and Lord, may we say our heartfelt goodbyes and our prayers for only tonight as she leaves us. So help us even tomorrow, Lord to be used of you to t uh, speak into other people's lives. Help be ready to share the gospel, to give out a tract, to be burdened for the lost, knowing that the night is coming, the day is far spent. We have not much time left. So Lord, bless us now as we stand, as we'll sing, as we'll say goodbye to one another until we meet again on this Lord's day. For that, we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. Pastor Fisher is going to come and lead us. And Monique is already out there in the Bennett's. Or the, no, David and Vicky are there. But anyway, make sure you stop and say bye. All right, number 609, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Let's stand the sing the chorus.
and we'll be dismissed. Thank you. You're dismissed.